Noah's Ark by Igloo Books and creatively read aloud by me, T. A long, long time ago, God looked down on the world and frowned. He wasn't at all pleased with what he saw. The world was no longer the beautiful place he had made. Everywhere he looked, he saw fighting and people being unkind. The world needs a new start, decided God. I will send a flood to wash away all the wickedness, and I will ask Noah to help me. God knew that Noah was a good and honest man who loved God. He worked hard for his family, was kind even to the tiniest of creatures. God knew that Noah was the perfect person to help him with his plan. So, God spoke to Noah. At first, Noah was afraid. But when he heard God's kind words, he listened carefully. Noah, said God, I have something very important to tell you. I am going to wash the world clean with a great flood and start all over again. Every living thing will be washed away, but you and your family will be saved must build a big, strong ark and fill it with every kind of animal, male and female, you can find. There was no time to lose. Noah went to find his toolbox at once. Then, Noah rushed off to tell his family what God had said. They all loved God as much as Noah did, so they got to work right away. As they cut down trees and started to saw and hammer away, people came to see what they were doing. God told me to build an ark to save us from the great flood, explained Noah. Ha ha ha, laughed the others. You must be crazy. You're wasting your time. Why don't you come and have fun with us instead? Noah refused to listen to them. He worked harder and harder. He worked day after day and year after year. He knew he was doing God's work. After many long years, Noah tapped in a final nail and stood back to admire his work. The ark was finished at last. It's all very well, scoffed the passerby. But what use is a boat without water? For the boat was sitting on dry land. You'll see, replied Noah. There's plenty of room for you if you want to come aboard when God floods the world. You're completely crazy, laughed another person. Only a madman would spend all those years building a boat without water. Everyone laughed at Noah and carried on with their sinful ways. But Noah didn't mind. He still had work to do. It was time to load the ark with all the supplies they would need for a long voyage. As Noah and his family carried food, water, and piles of warm bedding onto the ark, they suddenly heard a loud sound. What was that? asked Noah. Everyone stopped and looked around. At first, they couldn't see anything. Then, dust began to rise and the ground began to shake. Look, cried Noah's wife, pointing. There in the distance, they could just make out a pair of woolly sheep, and behind them came a pair of striped zebras. Behind them were a pair of prancing horses. The animals were coming. Soon, every animal you could possibly imagine, and a few you couldn't, were streaming onto the ark. All aboard, cried Noah as his wife checked each one off the list. Noah was almost ready to slam the door shut when he noticed that a crowd was watching. People from far and wide had come to laugh at the crazy Noah. It's not too late. Save yourselves and climb aboard before the rain starts, cried Noah. But that just made the crowd laugh even more. 
They all thought Noah and his family were crazy to crowd onto a boat with all those noisy, smelly animals. They roared with laughter as Noah struggled to get the last animals on board and closed the door of the ark. Almost immediately, clouds filled the sky and the first drops of rain began to fall. It rained and it rained and it rained. Soon, water began to flood the land around the ark. Lightning flashed and thunder crashed. The wind howled and waves crashed against the side of the ark. One enormous wave lifted the ark clear off the ground and carried it away. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Water covered the world until there was no dry land left. The ark was tossed around by the waves, but it refused to sink. Inside, Noah and his family were too busy to be afraid. There were animals to feed and beds to clean. Noah always found the time to make sure that even the smallest animals felt safe and warm. Don't worry, he told them. God will take care of us. Sure enough, God hadn't forgotten them. One day, a warm wind began to blow and the rain stopped. Very soon, the water began to go down. Then, after 150 days of calm seas, there was a loud bump, followed by a scraping sound. The ark had come to rest on top of a mountain called Ararat. Noah and his family peered out anxiously. When can we get off? asked his sons. The animals are getting rowdy. Noah just smiled. God would give us a sign when it is time, he said. Many long weeks passed. Then Noah decided to send out a dove to search for dry land. All day, everyone waited anxiously for the bird to return. Finally, the dove came back with a fresh olive branch in its beak. This is a sign from God that the weather has gone down, cried Noah, clapping excitedly. It's time to leave the ark. Noah and his sons pushed against the ark door until it burst open. There was a stampede as the animals poured out into the sunshine. They were delighted to be free at last. They couldn't wait to find homes and fill the world with new life once more. Noah and his wife were so glad that they had made it safely through the flood. As they watched the animals leave, they looked up into the sky joyfully. Thank you, God, for keeping us safe, they cried. Suddenly, an amazing striped arch filled the sky. It was the world's very first rainbow. Then God spoke to Noah again. Do you see this rainbow? asked God. This is a sign of my promise to tell you and all the animals that I will never again send a flood to wash away the world. Every time it rains, a rainbow will appear to remind you of my promise and of my love for the world. From that day on, God was true to his word. He never sent another flood. And Noah and his family lived happily in their bright new world.